Don't tell Chelsea this, but Chelsea has turned into a prepper. Oh, has she? She's like gotten crazy over this thing. Let me let me tell you the the story. So there have been like boxes being delivered to our house. And I'm like, what is this stuff that's that's coming to the home? And they're kind of heavy. And she'll like open them and she'll go right into our uh, you know, uh cupboard that we have in the in the kitchen. And I go into the cupboard because of, you know, and, and open it up. And there are like cans of food and stuff that she's like put all throughout the, you know. The pantry. Like non-perishable and, stuff that y- lasts y- well, forever? Yeah, like, uh, you know, like cans of corn and things like that and cans of, you know, uh, vegetables and then cans of other types of foods in there that probably have, you know, I don't know who knows what in there. You should call call my wife, Chelsea. I guess we'll, I'll, I'll call this out because she'll hear about it from somebody else. And then I read this story this morning and now I know what she's talking about. Scientists are now warning that the world could be left starving without any food in just over two decades. One scientist specifically said in 27 years and 251 days on Sunday, April the 24th of this year, we will run out of food at the way that we're going right now. The food demand is so high and the amount of food that is being made in, in the fact that you know they can't get it out to people is making it that there may be a problem with a food shortage a global food shortage around 2050 could happen oh but here's the thing you There's know what this no means way by the way she could stock up on enough food to last you more than like... <laughs> wait is that a joke for me no I, it's really not it's not <laughs> you made it oh. a joke for you I'm just saying, like, <laughs> Fat boy. You're, wow. you're, you're, it's only going to last you for so long, and then you're still screwed. Well, As somebody who was raised by know, preppers, logistics does not affect them in any ways. Okay, because <laughs> I, and I know this, Megan. That's I'm actually very legitimately asking this question. Like, unless you are truly growing your own food, but if it's the end well, of the world, well, that's the other thing. How, that's the other thing. Like, you're Chelsea's never going to have enough to last you until Chelsea. you die. No, my right? dad started a farm too. Don't worry about it. Oh, your your dad and Chelsea need to get together. Yeah, uh, Chelsea. I already have a farm. I already have a farm. She's a, seriously. <laughs> we're gonna start farming food. She says. Well, I'm because I'm my dad. I, my dad is leaving me his farm. Yeah, so. Chelsea's dad has oh, a farm nice. in Kentucky. And he's leaving her the farm. But she said, in the meantime, is- what are we doing in our backyard? Well, we're going to plant some vegetables. Mm-hmm. Oh. I mean, you can't do it year-round here, so, but we're going to plant some vegetables this summer. Did you oh. get your MREs yet? <laughs> so, no comment. <laughs> yeah, I like I, how you say uh, we're going to plant vegetables, as if Mojo's going to have some sort of involvement in this. <laughs> well, he's going to learn. He bought him some overalls. I <laughs> bet you, even when they're, oh my gosh, pictures. Even when <laughs> everything is ripe and ready to harvest, and Mojo can see it from the window, he's still going to call DoorDash and ask them to pick it and bring it to the door. <laughs> I do love that Chelsea knows Mojo enough to know that if she gets the outfit, he's more likely to. That's true. <laughs> That's true, Megan. By the way, I want to know. I want some people to call us up right now that are really into like this kind of conspiracy and. and at, and ask you guys, what are you doing to prep? Like, what is some of the stuff that you're doing? Because I bet you Chelsea's done it, too. Now, ch- ch- Laugh now. Laugh now. You will benefit later. Well, Mojo, yeah. used to, we used to nice. work with some preppers, and Mojo would make fun of them. So now I'm like, ooh, the prepper's in the house. You can't make fun of the person that's going to feed <laughs> you in the future when we run out of food. Chelsea, uh, you said no comment on the uh, on the one thing. What are you the afraid MREs? people are going to come to our house and steal our food? I mean, no comment. I just, oh. I cannot comment on what I'm doing. What what about what, what about water? I know we got definitely more than enough water here in Michigan that we can do things with. But do you have things that we can put in the water to make the water drinkable? You got to get the straws. I do. I do. I do. What, what are the straws, Megan? You can get straws, or you can drink, as my neighbor says, straight out of the creek. Uh, yeah. Hate that word. It is a creek. There's no I in it. But um, <laughs> not when you not survival. Then it's a creek. Right. Exactly. Then I trust anybody who says creek and survival more. Yeah. Because you've been out in the woods long enough yep. to know what plants you can eat and what plants you can't. <laughs> um. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on. So, Chels. The food is a big deal you're prepping for. Is there anything else besides food that I should be worried that's going to be coming delivered to our house? 
No, I mean, I'm making you work out, so there's some weights that are coming to the house today. <laughs> wait, wait, is that part of the whole survival thing? I don't know how that is. Well, that's for your health. For your oh, health. Man. Great. Yeah. But right. in the future, right. you know, if it's the apocalypse, we're all out of food, you're only as strong as your weakest link, so... Yeah, that's why I take me out the first round. You know it's bad when your father starts hoarding vehicles that were made before 1975 so that they'll still run in the apocalypse. You got no Uh-oh. digital computers. But where are you getting gas from? Chelsea, you wait, Chelsea, did you hear that? She got, just got the idea. <laughs> no, Chelsea, you need no, ideas. I knew it was Where are you getting gas from, Shannon says? Yeah. Shannon, there's gas under the ground. There's there's oil under them there. <laughs> Uh, and who's getting that for you? Huh? I'm gonna pull it right out of the right out of the ground. We're gonna get Mojo an outfit for an his refinery, oil, <laughs> an oil film. Uh, hold on a second, uh, I, Amanda. My wife is on here right now, and my wife should meet your husband, right? Is he one of the biggest preppers? Oh yeah, she should totally meet my husband. He is insane when it comes to prepping. So he actually has installed a giant CB radio antenna um, above our house that is taller than our house. Oh, gosh. How happy are you about that? I don't even really notice it, but he'll, like, go down in the basement and just, like, tune in to different um, truckers and talk to them and try to see where they're at to see how far his signal goes. And he's got buckets and buckets of rice and noodles and this big, like, storage area down in our basement. Mm -hmm. It's been... Does your husband do this when, when you make fun of him for stuff like that? Does he say... Maybe I'll share it with you, like Chelsea actually says that to me, if anything ever happens. Oh, no. He knows he'll share it with me. <laughs> yeah? Um, You'd like to think so. He, yeah. Yeah, I would like to think so, at least. Um, but he holds meetings, like, once every couple weeks with a couple of his friends. Oh. And they get together, and they talk about, like, prepping for the end of the world and stuff wow, like that. Wow, that sounds cheerful and could you Could you do us a favor? Could you tell us where you live so that Chelsea can see if it's... <laughs> Equal distance enough for our house? Yes, we live in Holland, Ohio. So if you guys okay. put in up the CB antenna, maybe we could reach you. Oh. <laughs> Breaker 1-9, good buddy. <laughs>